Hello everybody and welcome to Crusader Kings 2. Now, Crusader Kings 2 has a lot of DLCs. Uh, most of them are in the bottom here, the ones I have anyway. But beyond the way of life there is also Horse Lords and there is uh, the Reaper's Do, which is the last expansion. However, about everybody agrees that the best expansion in the game is the Old Gods. That gave us uh, Germanic Pagans and best of all, Raiding. With the last DLC, the last expansion, uh, the Reaper's Do, they uh, introduced a big patch to Crusader Kings 2, uh, like they do in every expansion, patch 2.6. And with patch 2.6, they had a little patch note that said something that most people will probably not even have read. Which is, Berbers are now tagged as seafaring. This is huge, because there is basically only one culture in the game that has seafaring, and that is Norse. In practice that means that the Norse are the only culture that can raid using boats. Now other people can raid, all pagans can raid and all tribal people can raid and they can raid their neighbors with little troops but they can't send boats from Sweden all the way down to Rome and, and sack Constantinople and do crazy stuff like that. Basically raiding with boats is a million times better than just raiding your neighboring provinces. Now that being said, that would mean that we finally have Burberry Pirates. The problem with that is though, is that in later start dates, there are very little independent Berbers. Uh, so, we are going to start in the early Middle Ages start as the tribal chief of Massad here. Who is a Berber, is independent and has two tribal coastal provinces. Now, just like about everybody in the game, we don't start with any boat stacks, like you will see in a second. We don't actually have any tech here. We don't have a boat tech, any normal tech, we don't have anything. And even the neighboring Fudo provinces don't really have tech. So if we go to the technology map mode for boat building, now, these provinces have a little bit of... Wait, do we have a little bit of... Pro we do actually have a little bit of tech over here in Infa. We have econo economy tech and we have cultural tech. But we don't have any military tech like most of the rest of the world. Except for the Byzantines and starting uh, when an event triggers, uh, the Norse. So, it will be quite a while till we actually have any boats to raid. How will we spend those time? Well, we can raid our neighbors, we can holy war our neighbors because we are Ibadi, Muslim, and they are, for example, a bad example, they are uh, Shia and they are Sunni. So, we want to refrain from holy warring Sunnis because the Umayyad Sultan of uh, Andalusia here is a Sunni and he will help them and usually he has a lot more than 2k troops because 2k troops is not that scary but yeah usually they have like 10k so I'm thinking we're going to first expand into Marrakesh and form the Duchy of Marrakesh so we can have some county vassals and then we're going to build up our little empire till we have boats. And we will basically stay in the one duchy. And maybe we'll expand a little bit into Mali, have some counts over here as vessels. But we will not uh, become feudal till we have built up a lot in the Massad tribe over here. And we actually have a lot of uh, uh, buildings. So... That being said, I won't expand into Fes, which is just such a juicy and big province, or Tangier, or any of the other very good provinces over here. Now, we border Marrakesh, and at some point I might uh, move my capital away from Assad into Marrakesh, because it's a six, six 
holding province. It's one of the best in the game. I think the only other are maybe Cordoba. No, not even Cordoba. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, Brugge has such uh, provinces. And so has Constantinople and maybe Rome. Yeah, Rome as well. Paris? No. Oh, that's Fermando actually. Paris. Uh, yeah, Paris does have it. And Middlesex? No, not even Middlesex. So there are only like five provinces in the game. Well, in Western Europe anyway, that uh, are that good. So even though it's not coastal, at some point we might uh, move our capital inland to Marrakech because it's just very good. Now, to start off, we are the chief of Massad. We are 34, we are unmarried, we are a skilled tactician. We're not that bad, actually. I think to start with... We want to find a wife, and because we're Muslim, it doesn't matter, we'll just marry anybody. We will also go on a Hajj to Mecca, because we want to get that piety up. We will invite a holy man to court. So we actually have a court imam. Oh, he is useless, but we'll uh, let him... No, not proselyze, we'll have him... Build zeal anyway. And then we'll also let you study technology. Can we reach Constantinople? Yes, we can. So, does it matter where we study technology? No, these provinces are just as good. So, we'll not do it in the capital. We'll send them over here. You, the steward. You will build legend, the marshal will organize a raid, and you will improve diplomatic relations with... Uh, is he a caliph? No, he's a sultan. The sultan. Uh, we have no heir at the moment. If I die, this is the end of uh, the first run of this let's play. So, yeah, we will lose every title. We can choose an ambition, and yes, we will choose the ambition to have a son. Because that increases our fertility. And even though we have no air, I'm going to choose the war focus. Because, well, it's just good. I want to have more martial. I think we'll have 18 martial then. And that's it. I'll unpause the game for a second. There we go. We have 18 martial and we're wearing our, well, military hat. We also want to consider to maybe yeah, we'll press this button twice which means two random ladies appear at the court and because we're tribal there will not be second wives but they'll actually be concubines and we'll take a concubine now the other one has a stutter i'm not going to mate with somebody with a stutter that are bad genes for a gene pool uh, to start off with, we will actually start raiding. So we'll get the troops together. Go to Infa over here. Ah, I'm now fully prepared for my travel to Mecca. There will be a regent ruling Massad while I'm away. And I will gain the trade on Hajj. And my spy master has been appointed as my regent. Even though I'm pretty sure my spy master is... Yeah, my spy master is over here in the Byzantine Empire. So I'm not sure how he is more fit to rule than me, who is on its way on his way to Mecca, but well there we have it. Okay, traveling by sea causes you to feel seasick. Luckily there is a uh, Havis on the ship who quotes the Holy Quran and there shall be made to drink therein a cup the admixture of which shall be ginger. I feel good and I gain 5 piety. Yay! Need piety for my conquest. So, the journey through the desert is long and arduous under the scorching sun. Suddenly, a large tea house materializes into thin air before your very eyes. And a singing jinn who seems to own the establishment beckons you inside. Strangely, the traveling companions do not take notice of this stunning event. So, 5% to gain the trade depressed, which isn't very good, minus 1 health and minus 5% fertility, or 5% chance to gain the trade possessed, which 
Negative attraction plus plus one personal combat skill. Hmm. You know what? I'll roll the dice and go for possessed. We did not become possessed. Let's merge these armies and we can. Oh, no, all of our commanders are also uh, doing something else. So we will have the army without commands. We'll toggle them as a raiders or well, actually looters. And we will invade Tangier here, which has 46 ducats of loot. Ooh, another uh, Haas event. As you stop for camp one evening, you notice that an old man in poor clothing is made camp at the same place. The man offer offers to tell you a hadith. He has if you can spare for him some bread. Well, yeah, we will listen to uh, the man. The old man starts telling you that... Uh, Kab ibn Malik reported that the messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said two hungry wolves loose among sheep do not cause as much damage as that is caused by a man's teen by his greed for money and by and reputation. Ah, so we gain the gold back I guess because we're not greedy. Righto, so we are looting this province. Now we're not using the boats, which is a different mechanic. We're just using our normal lootery uh, thing. And you will see that our money over here, our wealth will quickly increase. While this bar, which is the possible loot we can get from this province, uh, goes down. Now it will increase to go down till we hit this wall. Uh, this wall represents the castles and all our fortified structures in uh, the province. And that basically protect a part of their wealth. But anyway, as you arrive in Mecca, you start preparing for the evening prayer. When you discover that the water in the well is not entirely pure, this should uh, this would not be valid water to use for ablution. Inform the others nearby. I gain ten piety. You are now at the Kaaba itself and performing the Tawaf. Seven circuits you will walk around the black stone and each time you complete the circuit you point at the stone and say in the name of Allah, Allah is great, Allah is great, Allah is great and praise to be Allah. I can either shout at every circuit which will make me proud and give me prestige or only shout the first three times which will give me a buttload of piety and a humble trait. I will actually go for the humble trade. I think we will get enough prestige to warfare and other things for now. Ooh, performing the Sa'i involved running seven times between the hills of Safa and Mara. This is done to remember the search for water by Ishmael's mother. I feel invigorated. I gain one health permanently. Wow, that's amazing. Events just keep coming. Uh, you catch up with some fellow pilgrims who are also returning home from the Hajj. They have been beset by bandits who have stolen everything but their clothes and left them with no means to continue the journey. Uh, here, this should be enough to see you safely home. I'll give them one gold and gain 15 piety. Sure. We only lose one gold in these events because basically we have very little income. I have returned to my court a changed man. I am truly humbled before Allah and I know that all men are equal and can live in harmony with each other. I gain the trait uh, Hajjaz, which gives me plus one stewardship, piety and Muslim opinion. And my regency has ended. Which means I can also be in charge of these troops, even though we don't really need to, but leading troops can give you good events. So we have looted everything from this province and now we have to make a choice we can either siege down this fort which means that we get more loot because the loop uh, the the little castle or wall thing here will go down a bit or we will not uh, siege this province and the loot bar will fill up way quicker than if we were to siege this and i think we're not going to siege it we're going to move to Fez, which is also a very rich province and we will uh, loot that for everything it's worth. Goes very quickly. And I think that we will... Uh, 
Yeah, there are only 400 people here. We will actually uh, burn down fast. Which will take quite a while, but we're playing with very fast speed and it's early in the game. Ooh, two bad events, but hey, we still have enough men here. We're just going to wait till it is ticked down all the way. Our neighbor has died. Wow, a lot of bad events for us. Hey, but we have almost sieged this uh, castle. And that means that we get some extra loot straight up. And we can also loot uh, a lot more from the loot bar. This will also mean that we are uh, sieging up the next holding here, which is a town and will fall very quickly. There we go. Only 5% every 12 days instead of the 5% the castle had. So it will fall in a month. And we get 18 gold from that. Is a lot. The next is a temple, which we will also loot. More of our besiegers die, but they we have four times the amount of troops that he does. There we go, that's the siege of Zerhundan. And we have looted 12 gold from the temple. Now the next one will be a castle and I don't really feel like sieging up another castle. So I'll make the raiders head home. Been quite enough for now. Uh, now we uh, actually recovered some troops. We have a thousand troops. Now he only has 600. 500 I think I will start a holy war for Marrakesh now nearby Shia rulers might join him but I think he is the only Shia or he is Shia as well but hey I think we can take him not even sure if uh, his neighbor will join the war There we go. Let's attack him even though it's into the mountains. We will catch him and he only has one flank so we'll basically win very easily. He is fleeing into the plains but too late. Let's keep an eye on this, that nobody takes advantage of our uh, war and starts attacking him as well. Ooh, my courtier died. I think she was my concubine. Yes, she was. Uh, we will actually take another one because we still don't have an heir yet. Uh, we can still present the debutante for one gold and we will. And take her as a concubine. have righteous imprisonment on this man because he is probably plotting something so here stop your plot all right let's just seat down some stuff wow that's a lot of negative events i'm we're rolling like crap on these siege events not even funny now we will have this done before he has sieged up my capital will we also be done with this one no we probably won't i'm actually going to scare him away Yes, he has escaped. I did it on purpose because I don't actually want to engage him. I want this army to stay alive. Because as long as he keeps an army of about 400 men, none of his other neighbors will start to holy war in and try to steal our land from underneath us. 
It would be very annoying. Oh, he has raised up some troops. I'm not sure why. He just has an army. Oh, because he is getting holy ward. Okay. Oh, you know what? I actually have to uh, scare him away again. No, you have to leave. Let's run home to Dentiers, and now we will basically. Oh crap! He was actually first to that province, so his siege will be done before ours will be. There we go, now... Stupid. Yeah, he will be first. He might seize one of my provinces. I actually have to seize his province even though we have a 100% war score. If we don't siege it, we don't actually get any land here that's the nature of the holy war cb we have to siege up uh, at least one holding in all the land we want i know it's crap but oh fate smiles upon me my concubine gida is pregnant i like it hopefully she will give us a son we desperately need it Oh, and he finished first, but uh, it doesn't matter. Because we have fully occupied all his holdings, and if we press this button, we will enforce demands and take everything he has. Also gain 100 piety, 50 prestige, and lose dec decadence. There we go. The Masatian Holy War from Marrakesh has ended. Chief Hamad, that's us, of Masat 1. So we now have four provinces instead of only two. We do however also have a mosque. We are a tribal ruler, which means we can't help mosques. mosques. Normal uh, Muslim feudal rulers can actually hold temples. Uh, the Catholics can do that, but Muslims can. We will uh, create a new vessel. Which is our first vessel, which means we will have a uh, Wali here. Is he actually a godly man? Yes, he is. He is, however, slow. He's a slow master seducer. That's a very interesting combination. I never think of those things of going very well together. But hey, apparently he's a ladies man. Uh, I'm going to cut a little break in right here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next episode.